Well, hi everyone. On my most recent video about the Rhode Island Washington Bridge saga involving the state government of Rhode Island and their DOT, I indicated that the failed response, in fact, nobody responded to the request for proposal for the design and construction of a new Washington Bridge project. And I suggested that, gee, maybe they don't want to threaten to sue everybody who's ever been involved with the Washington Bridge previously, and maybe they'll get some more interest. Well, after that fiasco, Rhode Island DOT issued a request for information to potential contractors basically saying, hey, tell us more about what you think about this project. So I'm going to get into uh, who responded. I'm going to cross-reference that list with the list of people who they sent these nasty letters to that, in essence, is putting them on notice that they may be sued by lawyers representing the state of Rhode Island. Also, I'm going to go through the list of responding firms to this request for information and go through to see if any of them are likely to actually go forward and submit on a future request for proposal for the design and replacement of this bridge. Now, here's an article about the 11 companies that responded to the request for information. I'll put a link to this article in the description. Of course, after Washington Bridge was closed on a mercy basis back in December 2023, they spent months and months deciding what needed to be done. And finally, they announced that the bridge, in fact, needs to be demolished and replaced. And since Rhode Island officials vowed a day of reckoning to go after anybody who may have been responsible for the events leading up to the emergency closure of the bridge, they decided to go out and engage the assistance of two law firms, Wisto and Savage. They're looking to get about 17% of any potential damages awarded to the state of Rhode Island involving this bridge project from past involvement of these contractors and designers. Now let's look at one of these letters that they sent out. They sent these out on April 19th, 2024. I'll put a link to the article where a PDF of these letters was compiled by a local media outlet. So what the letter basically says is the law firm represents state of Rhode Island and they're expecting that this firm and the others that they notified to save all their records related to the Washington Bridge design and construction in the past, and that they should probably notify their professional liability insurer. And if you have questions, let us know, and you can come out and look at the bridge before a certain date because it's gonna be demolished. And then on April 26, exactly one week later after all these nasty letters go out, and I say nasty because the intent's pretty clear that these people stand a good chance of getting sued by the state of Rhode Island. So they go out with this request for proposal for design and construction of a replacement westbound bridge for Washington Bridge. And of course they had ridiculous schedule demands. They offered some incentives, but in all likelihood nobody would be able to collect that incentive or bonus pay for early completion. And there was gonna be damages for being late. So they wanted all this work done in 2026. The deadline for responding to the request for a proposal was early July, July 3rd, and not a single company submitted a proposal. And there's this Go Local article about the flawed RFP process. The RFP process was rushed out and had all this onerous language in it and token incentive language to provide political cover, it, it, it seems obvious, to the governor of Rhode Island and his administration. Because as a practical matter, if you're really interested in getting this bridge replaced as quickly as possible uh, after first designing it in short order. This is not how you go about it. This article goes on to say, this is a shocking situation. Rhode Island DOT invited thousands of companies to review the bid documents and fewer than 70 did so. One company submitted questions. No one read through the documents and thought bidding would be wise. There were also some contractors that had requested some informational meetings to be held prior to the deadline for responding to this RFP and the state of Rhode Island refused. So as they say, you reap what you sow. So Rhode Island DOT regroups, and on July 19th, 2024, they issue their request for information. Purpose of this RFI is to solicit information and suggestions from qualified parties regarding the solicitation documents and procurement process for the design build services to replace bridge number 700, which is 
westbound on Washington Bridge, Rhode Island DOT intends to use the feedback from this RFI to revise the procurement documents for the bridge replacement project. This RFI is open from July 19, 2024 to August 2, 2024, with a vendor question and answer period from July 19 to July 26. No award will be made as a result of this request for information, and all costs associated with developing or submitting a response shall be borne by the vendors. So you might ask yourself, well, why would somebody respond to this? I mean, it's going to be a big project, and it's only getting bigger by the day. It's, it could be hundreds of millions of dollars to replace this. Originally, when the request for proposal went out, Rhode Island DOT estimated the design and replacement cost for this bridge to be around $300 million. That's not going to even touch this project now. It's going to be way more. So here's the list of companies that responded to the request for information from Rhode Island DOT. There's 11 of them. And I'm going to go through these one at a time and kind of give you my overview of uh, the company and how they could potentially be involved with a future design build replacement for Washington Bridge. Now, I said I would compare this to the list of letters that were sent out by the attorneys ostensibly going after anybody who may have been involved with the Washington Bridge in the past. And by the way, that legal team said that they would announce whether they would recommend that the state of Rhode Island sue one or more of these companies by some time in August. I thought it might have been by now. I'm recording this video on Thursday, August 7th, 2024. So we'll see if they come out with an announcement sometime this month. But the companies that got these letters, putting them on notice was AECOM, Steer Engineering, Prime AE Group, Cardi Corporation, Barletta Heavy Division, Aetna Bridge Company, Vanace Hangen Bruslin, Commonwealth Engineers and Consultants, Trans Systems Corporation, Collins Engineers, and Michael Baker International. Now you see the red arrows. Of these 11 companies that got these notice letters from the attorneys, only Michael Baker submitted a response to Rhode Island's request for information. The other arrow I show you here is Aetna Bridge Company, who was awarded the contract for the demolition of the existing westbound bridge. And they didn't respond to this request for information relative to the design build project. So let's go through these companies who submitted a response to the request for information about the procurement process for the design build project for Washington Bridge. So we have American Bridge based out of Pittsburgh. I've done many, many projects with American Bridge. They're, they're a heavy hitter. They could certainly handle this project if they wanted to. ACEC, you know, the word lobbyist group has a negative connotation, but in essence, that's what this group is. They advocate for engineering consulting firms, and everyone needs an advocate dealing with DOTs and other entities in, in this country. And one of the things they do is try and encourage better contracting mechanisms between uh, state entities and design professionals, because otherwise you run into this kind of nasty language. This is from a, a contract that I was uh, presented for a DOT project, and they put you on the hook for essentially unlimited liability. So ACEC tries to intervene and get more reasonable contracting mechanisms for design professionals. And one of the things that they've been instrumental in doing is to ensure that state and local governments adhere to a qualification-based selection process for design professionals because you don't want design professionals competing strictly on the basis of price. I mean, does anybody have a medical procedure and they put it out for bid to two or three doctors and then go with a guy who's going to do it the cheapest? So kind of the same idea. The consultant shall pay for or reimburse the secretary for damages and costs the secretary has incurred or will incur because of the consultant's negligent acts, errors, or omissions arising out of or in connection with consultant's performance of this agreement. These damages include personal injury to the DOT employees. I've redacted the name of the DOT here damage to DOT's property, and economic loss, whether the economic loss arises in contract, tort, or equity. Economic loss encompasses direct and consequential damages. State law permits the secretary to recover, including monies the secretary pays or owes to construction contractors, money the secretary pays or owes to consulting firms, delay damages, or other damages arising from the consultant's negligent acts, errors, or omissions. So there's definitely been consequential damages, big economic damages associated with the sudden closure of the westbound bridge for Washington Bridge. 
You've got companies who have gone out of business. Uh, you've got other companies that are hanging on by a thread, their revenue and profits way down. So if a consultant was, I don't want to use the word foolish because people have to make a business decision, but if they were on the hook for an agreement like this, let's say their involvement for Washington Bridge may have been $20 million. So let's say they're on the hook for that, but these consequential damages could be hundreds, if not billions of dollars. And per a contract like this, it says they're still liable for those additional damages. Next, we had uh, GZA responding. In my experience, they're primarily an environmental consulting firm. So they may be looking at some aspect of the overall project, but they wouldn't be the prime bridge contractor or the overall designer based on, on what I know about them. Then you have a big civil firm, Halmar, out of New York. Based on what I see on their website, I'm not familiar with them, but they would certainly be a viable candidate for being involved with the replacement of this bridge for Washington Bridge. Then you have IBM. I have no idea why IBM would submit a response to Rhode Island's request for information about the Washington Bridge. So if any of you out there think you have an idea, please let me know in the comments section. Then you have J.H. Lynch out of Rhode Island. It's the only Rhode Island-based contractor that responded to this request for information. And it looks like, based on their website, they're a large civil construction firm. Then we have Kiwit Infrastructure out of Omaha. They're definitely a heavy hitter and could potentially handle a project like Washington Bridge without too much difficulty. Michael Baker International out of Pittsburgh, same thing, big time contractor. They would have no problem handling a project like this based on what I know about them. Skanska, based out of New York, but it's a Swedish mega construction corporation. They certainly do a lot of bridges. In fact, the state of Rhode Island just awarded a contract to Skanska and I'm gonna go over that here in a bit. So obviously they're viable for being involved with the replacement of Washington Bridge. Walsh out of Chicago, again, another big time civil contractor. They could handle a project like this, no problem. So right now, the demolition of the existing westbound bridge has not begun. It should happen within the next month, maybe late August or early September. So Rhode Island awarded the contract to Aetna Bridge for $45.8 million with a potential additional $3 million for early completion incentives. And that's well over 50% over budget that uh, Rhode Island had for this project, which was $31 million. So Aetna, who was sent one of these letters saying, hey, save all your records and we'll let you know if uh, we're gonna sue you later, stepped up for the demolition. But I imagine they said, okay, if we're gonna work with you guys, we're gonna, we're gonna charge accordingly. So I'm a business owner and I interface with other business owners in this industry. And there's two main ways to handle a problem client like Rhode Island DOT clearly is. And the first is to simply not do business with them, which is my approach. I don't have uh, any patience for dealing with companies that uh, are not gonna be acting in good faith or entities that I think might not be acting in good faith. It's just life is too short. Who wants to deal with it? Some people though say, yeah, they're a hassle. We'll deal with it, but they're gonna pay through the nose. And I've seen this with other aspects of DOT projects. I know of a state in particular that's so tyrannical when it comes to enforcing their specification for drilled shaft construction that they have perfectly good shafts that they'll delay acceptance of for no good reason or require additional coring or repairs that couldn't possibly do anything to change the condition of the shaft. And they've done this year after year after year. And as a result, I know firsthand that there's contractors that will not go back and do any bridge work in that state. Then there are other contractors who hang in there and they charge accordingly. So whenever you shrink the pool of potential contractors who are trying to get this work on a competitive bid basis, the fewer people you have, the chances are it's gonna be way more expensive. And then you've got the contingency effect where people know it's gonna be a problem uh, doing their project inherently with that given entity. So they're gonna charge premium prices for dealing with those headaches. So I mentioned Skanska earlier. Here's a go local story where Rhode Island DOT awards $625 million contract to Soul Bitter, and that was Skanska. So again, 
not a big pool of people competing against each other. And in fact, this article goes on to say that the DOT estimate for this project, it's a series of bridge projects, was $500 million. And there's some indication that for the $625 million, Rhode Island actually scaled back uh, the scope of the project relative to their $500 million estimate. So more money for less project is what they're going to get here uh, according to this article. So Rhode Island government officials clearly, in my view, are trying to seek political cover and as a result they've delayed the start for design and construction of a replacement westbound Washington Bridge. They're doing things to run other potential participants out of there and the few who remain based on just the last few contracts are going to charge well in excess of what Rhode Island DOT would likely estimate for the costs associated with a given project. And so on top of that, you've got pressures on business that I alluded to earlier, where it would appear that the state's likely to collect lower tax revenue. In fact, uh, Bally's president told investors on an earnings call that their revenue was down due to impact of Washington Bridge. And you can see that many potential visitors to that casino would cross the Washington Bridge. So not good for them. So let me know what you think about these issues in the comments section. I really enjoy your feedback. I want to send a shout out to book author Neil Martin. I've got a link in the description for his book, Catastrophe Theory. He unsolicited, he sent me a copy because the lead character is a forensic engineer, a very sharp forensic engineer. And uh, I really loved it. I mostly read nonfiction, but I do read about one novel every month. Uh, about 20% of my reading, maybe less actually, the rest is nonfiction. But I really enjoyed this book. And so check it out if you want to read a novel that features an engineer or just anybody in a highly technical role on some interesting issues. Of course, I want to send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your ongoing support. The ranks of the channel membership is growing all the time. There's a lot of perks associated with being a member. I just have a single tier. I also want to send a shout out to those of you who have provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. So I'll continue to follow the Rhode Island DOT saga relative to Washington Bridge. So please stay tuned for future videos.